Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about, you know, what did God create on that very first day of creation? And it is absolutely extraordinary uh, what he did on that very first day. Um, from the get-go, the Bible tells us that God created the heavens and the earth, which is right then and there, uh, you know, mind-boggling because it tells us that there's more than one heaven. Uh, and the Bible, you know, when we go through throughout the Bible, the Bible talks about the spiritual world and what's in the heavens. It talks about heaven itself, the dwelling place of God, and talks about the, the, the beings, the heavenly beings that exist in heaven. It talks about, you know, the first, second, the third heaven. Um, these are really interesting things to go into. But right from the get-go, the Bible tells us that God created the, the heavens and the earth on that very first day which is absolutely, absolutely extraordinary. It's the power of God on display, uh, what God can literally do in one day. So in the beginning, God creates the heavens and the earth. He was the beginning. He's the, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So in the beginning, God decides, he wills, and he creates the heavens and the earth. And then it goes into uh, verse 2. Verse 2, it tells us that the earth was formless and, and empty. Now, this is right there, right there. It's really interesting to me because it tells us that God had to give the earth form and that God had to fill the earth with stuff because right there, it tells us in verse 2 that the earth was formless and empty. And so God, he creates the heaven and the earth. Um, and then the earth, he constructed um, it to his liking. He, you know, he set the foundations, he structured it, he gave it form, he gave it definition, he gave it size, he gave it width, he gave it direction, he set the poles, you know, however you want to look at it, God formed it from his hands and how he wanted to architect the earth, shape the earth, it was all in his will. Um, he he decided to do it how he wanted to do it. And that is absolutely extraordinary that the earth was formless and empty. And it was up to God to construct it, to, to make it how he wanted to make it. And when we get the evidence of this later when God speaks to Job and, and he asked Job, you know, were you there when I did all of this? Were you there when I set the foundations of the earth? Which is quite extraordinary. Um, and it, it tells us that the spirit of God was hovering um, over the waters. Um, you know, some, some, you know, some people, you know, when you look at this, well, the first thing it tells you, it, it tells you, it shows you the spirit of God. So this is the spirit of God here working. This is the spirit of God here moving. This is the, the spirit of God here constructing, which is absolutely extraordinary. Think about God and, and his glory, just creating and constructing how he wants, you know, at, and at this point of creation, you know, God has his, his, um, you know, he's, he's building, he's constructing, he's in that, 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 that space where he's just creating and how he wants to create. And later in verse three, this is, and this is one on another thing that is absolutely, absolutely wonderful from the Bible. And verse three, God says, you know, let there be light, which is absolutely extraordinary because it tells us that God did not need light to create the heavens and the earth. Um, it's 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 in verse three. He's like, all right, I'm going to create light now. So all of the things that he was creating before, he did not need need even light to help him because he's God. He's God's glory is is enough lighting itself. God himself is enough lighting himself for him to do whatever he wants to do. He does not need light um, like to see in a dark room. God is just God. He can just move and do what he wants when he wants. So in verse three, he's like, you know what? At this point, I'm going to create light. And and after God creates light, when we go into verse four, it says that God saw the light and, he's, and he says it is good. And, and that right there is absolutely extraordinary because God looks at light and he's like, well, you know, light is good. And, and for that reason, I'm going to separate the light from the darkness. Um, and, and then he says, you know, I'm, you know, the light will be called day. And, and so he separates the day from the night. So he sets the, 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 the light apart from the darkness, which honestly is, is very extraordinary and foreshadowing of things to come because we know that, that God 
always separates the good from the bad, um, the wheat from the tares. I mean, the Bible has so many connections from the beginning. This is why God, um, you know, has always been who he is you know in the past in the present and the f in, in in the present and in the future god will always be who he is because since the beginning god has been separating the light from the darkness so when you look at the bible as a whole it really paints a, a picture of who god is in his character that god does not let the darkness and the light mix together because they have no fellowship they have no fellowship in in the creation of the universe they have no fellowship in in, in the sons and children of god and in, in, in the sons and children of darkness so you have to understand this clearly that this this says it foreshadows a lot of things and one of the things it foreshadows is is the separation of the wheat and the tares. And, and, and that's the first day of creation for God. Now that now a day in the Bible, sometimes a day God the Bible tells us that 24 hours could be a thousand years to God, uh, or a thousand years could be 24 hours to God. God does is not you know restricted or limited by time. God created time himself. Um, you know, the, the the sun, the moon, the stars. I mean, literally, humans, we came up with time by, by looking at the sun, by counting how many hours in a day, and, and we made time up because by observing things in the universe and we made our clocks and our, and our times and all that kind of stuff. But God, he's not governed by time. We govern by time. We measure everything by time, our age, school, uh, the, the time of the day, when it's time to do this and that. We measure every single thing by time. But but God, on the other hand, he, he orders and, and time does what he wants. He constructed time himself. Um, and so, it's it's very interesting that that in in the first day of creation, God creates the heavens, He creates the earth, um, He creates light, and then He creates the, the day and the night. He separates the day from the night, which all honestly that itself all you know makes me think because it says well, since God separated the light from the darkness when they were created, they were together, and and what does that mean? This is another thing. This is one of the the mysteries and, and awe awe striking moments of of who God is. That that at some point light and darkness were together and God separated them. So that is that is interesting. And then after separating them, He gave them each a name. He said, you know, light will be called day, um, and and you know the darkness will be called night. So we're talking about the the sun and the moon here. So God is literally creating days. Um, and, and that's the first day. Um, very interesting. Uh, so the things that God creates on the first day, um, if you want them to, to, to be listed, we're, we're, we're talking about the heavens. Uh, it's the heavens, the earth, a light separates light uh, and darkness, and he names them. The light is called day and the darkness is called night. And that's the first day of creation. I mean, that, that is extraordinary um, for the first day of creation. Yeah. <laughs>